What's up good peeps, my name is Kevin and this channel is all about learning to build websites and learning how to make them look good while we're at it. This week we're going to be looking at writing better code by keeping it dry, or in other words, don't repeat yourself. And at the same time, at the end of the video we're going to look at a cool button effect that we can try out too. So let's get started. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take a look here uh, at a file. I'm going to do sort of things the wrong way to start with. And then after that, we're going to go through and look at a, a better way of doing things. Now, the one thing that's really important to know is this isn't like essential knowledge, uh, but I think it's really good things to know, especially early on. If you actually want to do this as a living, uh, you're going to need to know this anyway. And even if you're just doing it as a hobby or you're building your own little website right now, this is a really important thing to know. It's going to make your life so much easier. It's going to make your lives just better. So let's get to it. So as you can already see on the screen, I have a very simple basic website here. Uh, and if we take a look at what I've done so far, I just have three sections here. Uh, section start, section middle, section end. Each one has a container inside of it, uh, a heading one, a heading two, a paragraph, and a little link down at the bottom. We can see that there. Uh, I haven't done too much in my CSS, but let's go jump in and just see what I've already done. Uh, I'm bringing in a Google font, uh, I'm bringing in two. Um, Comorant Infant is this nice one up here, and then Lato or Lato, let's call it Lato, uh, right here. So Lato is set to my body, I've turned the margin to zero on my body because that always gets in our way. For my H1s, I've put a uh, Comorant Infant, uh, put the weight up to 700, change my font size to 75 pixels, and just put my margin to zero to get rid of a bunch of extra space on my H1s. On the H2s, I've just made the font size a little bit smaller, got rid of some of the margin that was on the top, and made sure the font weight was 400 so it's not bold. And my paragraphs, I've just increased the line height. And the links, I've uh, just switched the color over to inherit for now because they looked really ugly with that blue color. The last thing I've done is just putting my container here uh, with a width of 70% and margin zero auto to center it on my page. Now, what I want to do is I want to give each one of these sections its own color. So let's start by doing this. Um, I want to set it up so it looks nice, but let's just start off with the first one, start. And we need to come in here and I'm going to give it a background color. And I already have a few colors picked out, RGB 41, 62, 70. So that's the color I want for that one. Uh, over here in the middle, woo, doo, 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 find my color, uh, my middle, I want to have a background color of 154, 199, 195. Did I do something wrong? I did something wrong. RGB. There we go. A nice lighter version of that other one. And the last thing I want to do is my end. Uh, just to make it more interesting, let's give this one a background image. Uh, URL is, gotta go back, my image folder and mtl.gpg. There we go, a nice picture of my hometown. This sadly, um, I'm a teacher and a lot of my students give me files that look a little bit like this. Uh, let's just go and fix the colors a little bit here too. The text is hard to read, color, whoop, I did have it white, white, and over here, let's do another color white. So we can actually read our text a little bit. Um, so I get things like this from my students. So first off, uh, just going a little bit into the, the whole making it look good thing, make sure you put some padding when you're using background colors. It looks terrible when our things are stuck like that. So obviously what I could do now is I could come to my start and do padding, uh, top, whoops, I'm having some trouble here, top, 100 pixels. Ah, that's better. And padding, bottom, 100 pixels. Ah, uh, there we go. That top one's looking a lot better, but now we gotta go do that on the middle one now. So, okay, let's go to middle. Padding, top, 100 pixels. Padding, bo bottom, 100 pixels. Ah, there we go. And, oh, well, I gotta go do that on my third one now, too. Wait a second, this video's all about not repeating ourselves. 
we don't want to repeat ourselves. This is getting repetitive. And what if I decide I don't like those? I think it would look better if it was smaller or bigger. And then I have to go and change them all. Oh my goodness. That's just way too much work. I am lazy. Keeping it dry lets us be nice and lazy, which I like a lot. So I'm going to bring that back down to there. And let's just make our life so much easier. Section. All of these happen to be sections. And so section, padding, and let's keep it even shorter, 100 pixels top and bottom, and zero pixels left and right. There we go, all of them get it in one shot. Oh, you know what? That would be better if it was 120 pixels. All of them update at the same time. Keeping it dry. I'm not repeating myself. I'm only putting my padding on one line of CSS instead of spreading it out over each one of my classes that needs it. And it makes my life so much easier for updates and so much easier for changing things. So by doing something like this, where I'm just cycling all my sections, giving them the same padding, and I'm good to go. And then I go, oh, you know what, this middle one, that one could actually use a different from the rest. I want that middle one to be different. Padding one, let's say 250, zero. Whoop, I did that on my start. <laughs> meant to do it in the middle, but that's okay. It shows you the point anyway. Padding is different on this one than those ones, so I can always overwrite this if I need to. But in this case, I don't need to. So I can keep them all the same, and I think that looks nice and nifty and pretty good. Now, if any of you have used something like Bootstrap or Foundation or any of those uh, frameworks that are out there, you've probably used a lot of dry stuff, especially with stuff like buttons and a few other things as well. And I love how they treat buttons, so I'm going to do my own buttons. I treat my own buttons like this normally anyway, as long as I have different types of buttons. So you see here, I've made a link normal button, a link of ghost button, and a link of normal. That last one should be normal. That last one should be an awesome button because I have my button awesome class on there. Um, and again, I see lots of people who do this. So they have their first button. So let's just do my button normal. And I am going to start just by, let's give it a background color. I don't have one pre-picked. That's actually a pretty good color. Uh, so let's try that out, save. And there's my background. Okay, I need to do my text decoration, none. Uh, I need to give it some padding, let's say 1M, 2Ms is usually a nice little balance, and the spacing's a bit off because I need to change the display to inline block. All right, and that looks a bit better. Okay, that's actually pretty good. Now my button normal, let's come and do a button normal hover. I don't need to change anything here actually, except my color. Let's just make it a little bit darker. And there we go. I have a nice little hover effect on my button. Okay, but now I need my ghost button over here. So let's start there. I, I want my BTN ghost. Uh, I need this to be display inline block. I need the text. To, oh, wait a second. I'm repeating myself again. I don't want to repeat myself. So let's just delete this and we'll come back to that in a second. Uh, something like display inline block. All my buttons need that. Text decoration, none. I want that on all of them. Get out of there. Padding, out of there. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another class here. And this, if you've used Bootstrap or something, is something you might have seen before, is the button class. So my button will have a display inline block. It will have padding of one, M, two M's, and it will have a text decoration of none. And uh, now obviously it's not working properly. I actually am not using this class. So I have to come back and I'm gonna have a button and it's a button normal. And I'm stealing Bootstrap's naming convention a little bit. They don't have a button normal, but they, have, they always do button, button, something that styles it. And I just like that for keeping the consistency. Uh, I know that this, this class works with my button because it starts with the little shorthand for my button. Uh, so I'll save my HTML file there and I'll come back. Oh, just saving it. All of a sudden these properties are applied. So we can see that it's working really nicely. And now let's just go and add that BTN here, BTN. And let's come down over to here and do another BTN. 
And let's come over to here and you can see that padding is being applied here and my inline block and the text decoration is gone on all of them. So my button is this like global setting just like I was using my sections before. I was taking my padding and applying it. All of my buttons need display inline block. All of my buttons I want this padding on it and all of them are going to get my text decoration none. And then I'm using separate classes to style what they actually look like and make them a little bit different from one another. So now I can come down and do my BTN ghost. And this one's a border of, let's say, two pixels solid white. Uh, the color is white. There we go. And then I can copy hover. Uh, my border is actually going to stay the same, but my background will change to white and my color will change over to black. And I get a nice little hover effect on that one. And very little CSS. I'm not repeating myself. Again, I'm doing everything I can not to repeat myself. And it makes my life so much easier. So let's come down to my button awesome now, just again. Uh, my button awesome, actually. I'm going to make it a lot like my button normal. Uh, I only need this one button. Awesome. Let's just save that so we can see my button over there. And then I can come in. What I want to do for this one, and it's not really going to work with this background. Uh, so let's just ditch the background. Um, probably shouldn't have used that uh, background. Let's just give it a nice whoop, my color pickers having some trouble. Let's just give it a nice light gray. And if I'm doing that, I need to turn off. There we go. Uh, and there's my button. Awesome. Actually, my button. Awesome. Oh, I have my color set to inherit. Uh, button normal. Uh, the color should always be white on these. And color white. Uh, I think that looks a little bit better than that black that was coming through. Uh, and now let's do a BTN awesome hover. Alrighty, so for my button awesome hover, what do I want to do? I want to give this one, I want to make this one a little different. I'm going to do a box shadow of, um, let's say, two pixels, no, I want to do zero. Say two pixels down, uh, three pixel blur, and I want a negative three pixel spread, and let's give it a RGBA. Uh, we want black, so black's nice and easy, and maybe 0.6. Let's see what that looks like. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, I don't want that on my hover. I want that. Let's just copy that because I'm going to need a box shadow anyway. Save. Oops. Save. Uh, Means that too much. Hmm, you can barely see it. Uh, 0.75. What if I just put this to zero for now? Uh, okay, actually, let's make that four and make that negative two. I want to see that little shadow, and I want it to be subtle. So we see there's a shadow there. It's disappearing when I'm hovering. It's a really sh subtle shadow, uh, but that's sort of the point. And, and then what I want to do is let's delete this for now. Uh, I want to transform this and I want to do a translate Y. So I only want it to move up. So transform lets me move things. Uh, well, transform, I get a lot of options. Translate lets me move and translate Y means I'm only moving it on the Y axis. So let's move it 10 pixels up. And you can see it's jumping 10 pixels. So that's, you know, a, a kind of fun hover effect, I guess. But, um, not really what I'm going for. What I'm really going for is I want it to look like it's moving, but the shadow stays in the same place. So we have to take our box shadow again, box shadow. Uh, I still want that to be zero pixels, but now I'm moving it up 10. So I'm going to take this. Oh, my original shadow is down four pixels. I'm going to put this at 14. Uh, I'm going to keep my blur the same and let's just keep that the same for now. And my RGBA is the same. And let's just see what that looks like now when I do it. So right away you can see it looks like it's jumping up and the shadow is staying there. Uh, it looks kind of weird though. 
So this is where it's really cool. Um, I put the negative two on this just because if it's at zero for my spread, you can see the shadow sticking out the sides a little, little bit. It's super subtle. But by putting it at negative two-ish, um, it's not sticking out the side, so it's only on the bottom. So it looks like it's a shadow sort of being cast on the ground. And now what I want to do is I want to take that shadow uh, and I want to, you know, if something lifts in the air, the shadow sort of changes. So I'm going to do like a negative 10 maybe. Uh, and now you can see it looks, actually this is going to have to be bigger. Let's try 18. Uh, just because this negative spread is sort of playing with how that's working. So now, actually let's make this blur a little bit bigger too. If I make this an 8. So there you go, it looks sort of like the box is lifting up in the air. The only thing is it's on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. So it doesn't look very realistic uh, that something would just hop up into the air that fast. So what we now need is a nice transition. I'm going to transition all these in out and do it over 250 milliseconds. So transitions, if you don't know them, is just to take a, whoops, and that transition shouldn't be here, that transition should be here. Uh, it's taking this state and we're transitioning all the properties uh, over 250 milliseconds and we're easing the animation in and out. And now I get this nice little hover effect. So it's looking, and this shadow should probably become maybe, if we do like a 0.6 there, so it gets a little lighter. Um, so it looks like the box is moving up in the air, the shadow is sort of moving down and away from it, uh, which is sort of what would happen in real life. So it gives us the buttons lifting up in the air like that. So, you know, a fun little effect that you can play around with. And there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with that. So I really encourage you to play around with it and see if you can come up with something that's a little bit more fun uh, or maybe more realistic. I'm doing this pretty fast, but I'm pretty happy with the result uh, that we just threw together. Um, now the last thing is this transition could probably go and I could put that on all my buttons and save and then I get that nice transition here I get the transition there and I get the transition here uh, so again don't repeat yourself we want to keep the transitions only on my buttons another thing you could do which is kind of fun uh, if you're using your transitions for everything and a lot of the time we want our transitions to be on everything is you can put a nice little star up here which selects everything and do a transition and hit save and that should work for absolutely everything except for some pseudo elements so if you're using stuff like uh, before and after uh, like I did in my last video on navigation so you could always check that out uh, you'll have to set this transition up to be on the before and the after because uh, if not this star doesn't actually grab them uh, because they're pseudo elements you have to save those or style those along with it so this makes sure that everything on my site has a transition as long as there's a hover effect or whatever type of effect that I might be after. Um, so that's it. Again, we're taking a look at putting in some dry code, trying not to repeat ourselves and trying to make it look good with some transitions um, as well as I tried to show you a few different button ideas here and fun things you can do with buttons that keep it out. You know, try and stay away from too much of the norm without making things too complicated. Um, so just really nice skill. If ever you see yourself repeating the same code over and over again, you're putting the same padding on everything. Come up with a class just for padding that you can use all the time. Anytime I need something to have a margin bottom of 50. Okay, well, I'm putting margin bottom of 50 on six different things. I'm going to make my own class for that, and I'm just going to use it everywhere. Uh, all of my sections, well, it doesn't matter their class. They're all getting the same padding. Well, I'm going to go and just say all my sections have that. If I'm creating my own buttons, I'm going to make my own default button that just sets the foundation for my button, and then I'm going to style my buttons separately with their own classes on top of that class there. I really hope you liked this video, and I really hope you learned something from it too. If you did like it, please hit the like button. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, anything like that, leave them in the comments below. I'm going to make sure to uh, be active down there in my comments. and. Uh, if you did like it, also hit the subscribe button to keep getting more content like this. Thank you so much for watching and have yourselves a great day.